Now, in the transcript for, from the, the trial, we're not listening to a recording. We're simply looking at a transcript that was made um, after the trial, so the record of the trial. So we have to take the questions and answers as they are in the, in the transcript. Um, and what we're going to do is to code the questions according to five categories. Okay, so we're, we have five different kinds of question grammatically. Um, one of the questions we have is WH questions. What are WH questions? Questions that start or have in what, why, where, when and how. Yeah, uh, and uh, obviously how doesn't have a WH, but it's well, no. the uh, exception to the rule. Okay, so WH questions are one kind of question. And the second quest type of questions we're going to look for are yes-no questions. And yes-no questions are questions that um, basically restrict the answer to a yes or no and just seek confirmation or otherwise. So it could be, are you hungry? Okay. Yes or no. Um, so um, sometimes these question types are referred to as um, polar interrogatives for yes-no questions and non-polar interrogatives for the WH questions because they're not looking for a, a polar yeah. answer. So we have these two um, categories. We also have um, a third ca category, and we're going to code our questions, one, two, three, four, or five, according to these categories. So number one is uh, WH questions, number two is yes-no questions. Our third category is... Um, alternative questions. Now, alternative questions are questions with an or in them. So we can have two alternatives. Um, are you hungry or uh, have you had enough to eat? Okay, is an example of an alternative question. Our fourth category is tag questions. You already mentioned tag questions, Claire. Tag questions are where you put um, a tag at the end of the question uh, with uh, the verb to be and a, a, and a pronoun. Like, it's hot in here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and our fifth category of questions are um, uh, an unusual category for, to call questions because they're not actually formed uh, as interrogatives, uh, declarative questions. These are questions that are statements that perform as questions. And we're going to have a look at uh, whether these occur in the data. So questions like, um, let's think of an example of a, a declarative question. Uh, or should we get one from, from the data? So an example of, um, it'd be useful, I think, to have an example of each question type from, uh, from our sample. So if we have a look at our data, um, question type number one, WH questions. Can we um, find an example of these, Claire? Yeah. So we've got, in what circumstances had you met her, which obviously is WH because it's got the what. Okay, in what circumstances had you met her? Um, our second category, yes-no questions. David, can you give us a yes-no Absolutely. Example? Did you tell the truth during that visit? Okay. Uh, and the answer is obviously designed to be yes or no. Yeah. Now we're going to look... Um, uh, at what the answers are, but we're not, we haven't got time in this podcast to focus on the answers. We're going to focus on the questions. The interesting question there is, do the yes-no questions get yeses and yeah. nos as they're designed to? But I think that's another story. Our third category, alternative questions. I don't think we've got any examples in this data sample. Have we? That's probably not surprising, is it? If we think about... Um, uh, giving someone two alternatives to choose from wouldn't really be ethical, would it, in the circumstances? It wouldn't be a good test. If we're thinking about examination in chief and cross-examination as examining the evidence, giving two alternatives is um, a, possibly not something that a lawyer is going to do. But we certainly haven't got any examples in this uh, data sample. Um, tag questions, then, an example of a tag question. Um, but you went beyond saying you did your best, didn't you? Okay. Um, another, uh, is there another example of a, a tag question? Um, um, on the... Yes. 
You've got, you knew, didn't you, that Kathleen, that there would be morphine found in Kathleen Grundy's body. Okay, thank you. And our five, fifth category then, declarative questions. Examples of declarative questions. And Kathleen Grundy's medical records, your typewriter, appointment sheets and visit books were taken. Okay, so no tag there. No. Just a statement um, for a response. Okay, so what we're going to do now then is to look at our two samples of language, 2,000 words, um, and exactly 70 question and answer terms from each of those two activities. And what we're going to do is to code all the questions, one, two, three, four, or five, and then look at um, the results. So, um, Claire, perhaps if you take uh, pages... The first three pages, mm -hmm. and David, you take the next three pages, and I'll take the last, and then we'll um, see what we get as a result. Having looked at all the questions in examination in chief, then, first of all, um, questions, WH questions, David, how many did you find in examination in chief? I found 14. Okay, mm -hmm. and yes, no questions? 37. Okay, lots of those. We didn't find any alternative questions, did we, in either sample. Um, tag questions in examination in chief, we found... Only two. Only two. And declarative questions, 17. 17. So out of our 70 questions, the most popular um, category in examination in chief was yes-no questions, followed by uh, declarative and WH. In cross-examination, then... Uh, in, uh, first of all, WH question. At 14 again. Okay. Uh, yes, no questions, we found. 17. And tag questions. 26. Uh, a big difference here. Remember, mm -hmm. there were two tag questions in examination in chief and declarative questions. 30. So a similar amount there. So what have our results found there? What, what have we found uh, we've only got a very small sample here, haven't we? If we were going to, going to do a larger piece of research, looking at how questions differ in um, examination and cross-examination, we could scale this study up, couldn't we, and take a much larger sample. But just looking at 2,000 words of each, what's our biggest finding, would you think? Well, the... the, the the difference in tag questions and yes-no questions and the two different activities. Okay, so if we focus on tag questions for a moment, these are almost exclusively found in cross-examination. What's the lawyer doing linguistically through the use of tag questions then? Um, if we just think, first of all, from the quantitative results, what, what, um, what might we say about what tag questions might be doing? almost putting pressure on the witness or Harold Chipman in this case to agree or confirm what the lawyers said in the, room, the rest of the question. Okay, so if we've got a, um, a question, let's take a, 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 a tag question from the cross-examination or a couple of cross-examination tag questions and see what, um, see what we've got. I've got one. Um, Right, now that was on the 3rd of September or thereabouts, was it not? Okay, so here we've got um, a tag that's expecting a yes as an answer, isn't it? Yeah. Now, this question in itself isn't a particularly challenge challenging question because it's simply um, asking uh, the witness, Harold Shipman here, to agree a date. It's yeah. likely that a more challenging question is going to come afterwards. So sometimes tag questions... Are, when we look at actually what they're doing, aren't challenging a great deal, are they? Because it's simply establishing uh, a shared fact, a, a piece of, 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 of knowledge that, that, that the witness and the lawyer agree on. But other questions might be much more challenging. Claire, have you got an example of a, a tag question that does, does more than simply mm -hmm. confirm a, a, a basic piece of information? Yeah, we've got here, well, to prescribe double that for Lillian Ibbotson, had you in fact done so, would have been reckless, wouldn't it? So that implies that he did do that and that he did something that was wrong. Um, and it, again, like you said, puts pressure on him to 
to agree and to admit something that he did? The effectiveness, the effectiveness of those type of questions is that the perception that the jury has of a witness who um, kind of competes against or, or declines what the, uh, or, or doesn't give the, the required answer to those. Um, and that's very powerful, that, uh, a very powerful tool that the lawyer has to uh, kind of exploit over the witness. So um, if we look at the results then, um, this high frequency of um, tag questions in the uh, cross-examination sometimes is about establishing simple facts, uh, but at other times is um, a much more challenging and powerful device, isn't it? A, a strategy at the, uh, at the disposal of the lawyer. Uh, and um, that's a very interesting finding, isn't it? Even a, yeah. in a small sample of, uh, of text. 